Hello and welcome to the next part of Game vs. Reality. In this video, we will check out R Factor 2. You waited for it and now we will do the comparison between all the simulations and I'm really looking forward to the simulation. <laughs> Okay, so here we go uh, directly into the game and uh, what I've done is uh, I set uh, the Silverstone uh, GT uh, or Grand Prix layout because uh, I don't have a notch life here in the game because I uh, took the uh, standard game and uh, yeah, there's no notch life so I didn't f uh, search for the notch life mode. And uh, what, I, what, but what I did is uh, I downloaded the GT3 car uh, the AMG GT3 that uh, we have a uh, quite a same comparison between all the cars no settings made uh, so uh, um, no competitors uh, just practice and then we go straight into the game okay so uh, I'm really looking forward to testing this game because I knew or I know the game already since about 10 years uh, because then I started driving uh, this simulation um, and at this time it was really the best one so it was uh, the best simulation you, you can have and uh, at this time and I don't know how it is now but at this time the all, all the uh, manufacturers and the Formula 1 teams whatever they used R Factor as the basic um, as their base in, uh, in their simulators and uh, I don't know about uh, how it is uh, now but uh, yeah I think it should be really good because I heard that some still use it but we will see now we will test drive it so headphones on race no settings made so um, there's no setting made uh, like force feedback or um, setup of the car whatever uh, I already said in my German video that I don't like the uh, that you don't see the pit limiter or that you have the pit limiter activated so that's what I don't like. Okay, let's start with the graphics. And uh, with the onboard graphics in car, it's like, uh, it's, I think it's better than iRacing because iRacing was the last video we did. And uh, because it's more detailed, uh, especially the cockpit view and the steering wheel and everything is more detailed, so I like that. Um, but for me, it's not important, the graphics. It's just uh, more detailed. Um, also, the display in front of us is more detailed, but uh, what I don't like is the numbers in the display. It looks really silly. It looks really strange because um, they use their own numbers and wh why didn't they use the, the original number? So um, I have no clue. And then you have the empty fields. Um, so that's a minus point for sure. But uh, in the end, uh, cockpit-wise, uh, it's uh, a little bit ahead of iRacing, so because it's more detailed, as I said. Um, the track itself, uh, I would uh, rate it uh, about the same like iRacing. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's not the best graphics, but uh, it's not too bad. So I would rate uh, iRacing race room and R Factor 2 on one level, I would say. And um, so that, that's okay. So as I said, for me, the graphic is not the most important. For me, the uh, driving dynamics is much more important. And uh, I will come to that point later on. Yeah, so uh, uh, let's see how it is performance-wise. Ah, sound-wise. Uh, the sound is uh, exactly the same like in the GT3. So uh, there's no, I think, for me, there's no there's no difference, but no big difference, let's say, uh, between race room, um, i racing, and um, race uh, R factor. So uh, that's that's cool. That's okay. Uh, performance wise, let's start with the force feedback settings. They are like in ra i racing, way too much. Um, so force feedback is pfft, it's much. Wow, you see, it's too heavy, and uh, yay, Mr. Safer is spinning around, yay. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, you really have to adjust the force feedback settings, so out of the box, it's like uh, too strong. And 
performance wise so now we come to that point it's exactly the same like in iRacing in iRacing I said I had to adjust the rear because it's too too loose here is exactly the same uh, not as much as in uh, uh, iRacing I would say but still too loose but I don't know the developer because uh, you know guys it's a front engine and it's a long wheelbase car and why you make it uh, oversteering such a car has to understeer so and I said are exactly the same in iRacing um, yeah I don't I don't know that point but uh, okay that's uh, your turn so uh, setup wise it's a uh, like in iRacing the base setup is a uh, thumb down and uh, yeah let's see how we can perform here in a fast lap now next lap will be a fast one um, and what I don't like as well is uh, that it I don't see in the display in the dashboard in front of me I don't see my uh, current lap time so uh, that's what I don't like if I break in straight line everything is fine with the base setting but if I want to do trade breaking then uh, uh, the car is oversteering a lot. Okay, here we go. better it's getting better lap by lap so I really have to listen to the spotter where's the apex I have to find the gears I used to race here at Silverstone uh, a couple of years ago together with Kenneth Heyer and uh, Miguel Turil in the Blancpain and um, with my first attempt attend I, uh, <laughs> I uh, already had to pay uh, 500 euros because I started with spinning wheels my first stint with spinning wheels out of the pits and uh, they fined me with 500 euros because it's not allowed in Blancpain <laughs> okay but now concentrate here on the lap Wow, I'm so stupid. Not fully concentrated because I'm talking too much. That force feedback is killing me, guys. I think I did a 210 or something in the German video, but uh, I couldn't really understand it. Now, okay. We do one more lap, one more performance lap. And then you get my summary. As you see, as you maybe see, and I said it also in the German video. one. Was it correct? I don't I didn't understand it um, um, I think there, there's not that much emotion like in iRacing you know um, so I like the game I really like it so if you want to drive it yeah you can do for sure it's a, it's, it's a lot of fun but I miss a little bit the emotion like I had in iRacing I don't know why maybe it's also because it's not the notch lifer maybe uh, but um, yeah, in, 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 in uh, iRacing, when I was driving there, it was like really, really cool. And here, I miss it a little bit. Um, so if I would have to choose between iRacing, Race Room and uh, R-Factor, I would choose uh, R-Factor, uh, no, I would choose, sorry, I would choose Race Room and iRacing before R-Factor. But I think it's that community thing. 
Uh, I really like the idea behind race room and behind iRacing to have that community around and um, I don't know if you can do it here as well but it's not that popular so uh, it's a really good simulation but I miss it a little bit as I said the emotions and uh, the competition in, uh, in the community so if I, if I would choose um, it would not be my first choice Okay, full of concentration. Whoa! Because of that force feedback and that really strong bumps, I miss almost every apex apex here. So the force feedback is way so strong. Okay, my summary. Um, as I said, I wouldn't choose the game, but uh, in general, it's okay. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't choose the game. Uh, I would choose before iRacing and Race Room. Uh, force feedback is too strong. Um, graphics is okay. It's better than iRacing. But uh, yeah, the uh, car setup is uh, also same as in uh, iRacing. It's not really good. It's shit. So <laughs> uh, yeah, but in general, the game is good. The game, the game is cool. It's a uh, quite realistic and um, if you if you like the video give a thumbs up and we will see us in the next video thanks for watching